Welcome to Elizabeth Oval, where first place Central Districts plays fourth place Port, Port Adelaide in the SNFL competition. Good bounce by the umpire, they compete. Good physical presence, and it's Poole who emerged, one of five Premiership players included into the Port Adelaide side. Good tackling by the Port Adelaide side again, in, which is terrific to see their attacking lines really apply themselves as defenders as well. Three in a row in front of their home crowd are Central going for, having previously beaten Port in round two and round 11, but coming off a loss last week against second place Norwood. Stevens, unusually with his right foot into centre half forward. Jimmy Wine, the 29, 30 year old. Some controversy over his age, Stephen. Well, I think you started the controversy by calling him 34 at Woodville Oval three weeks ago, and there he is, he's just 31. And the number of games just sneaking up on the age there. If it catches it, then uh, he's not going to have played much more football, is he? Saywell across the top, Cotton being picked up by Wilson. Should be one of many fabulous clashes throughout the afternoon. As Ken said, the ground is in magnificent condition. There's Northeast and Lures and Cotton. See it towards the line. Was Cotton held? No whistle. Finally, there is. It comes to the boundary umpire. And Peter Woyt is with us this afternoon. Peter, it should be one versus four. An excellent game of football. I think it's going to be a great game of football. Both teams uh, really have to win this game. And uh, even though it's on Central's home ground, it's going to be very tough. It's in the forward pocket for the Central District side, kicking to right of screen, probably against a two or three goal breeze. No score yet registered. Speaking of contests, as we see the windsock fluttering away, going to the left of screen. Mead seems to be at centre half back on Lewis. Brown, who just dispatched that one's in the middle. And McGuinness is being picked up by Potter in a roving role. And for my money, Potter's just not going to be able to keep up. So it'll be interesting to see how it unfolds. This is Conway swung into the ruck, Peter. Yes, uh, they had Crow Crowthers in the, in the ruck, uh, which was interesting to have him on the ground first up with Paulie at centre half forward. Might that be a great duel, McGowan and Anderson, if it unfolds that way. In the Lewis direction, Mead in good defensive, but well crumbed by Jimmy Wide, and he snaps through. Unfortunately, inaccurate for him, but it was a great snap. It was well roved. He was in the front and square, as all good rovers should be. Good piece of movement, uh, Peter, just yeah. not finished off. Just, just unlucky, yeah, not to finish that off. So nearly three minutes gone, and Central have the first on the board. Delaney brings it back in, a bit dodgy. Thought Northeast grabbed it and threw it away. Girdham is there as well. They paddle it towards the line, and Port Adelaide will leave a little bit of the heat down there. Now Anderson is directly opposed at the moment to Potter. Potter carefully not into the back. Anderson keeps a play on it, and then paddles it out the back for himself. Brown, a beautiful little give on the up towards McGuinness, and McGuinness goes inside 50 for the first time, the Maggies. And Stephen Schwert read it the best. Just sat back and took a nice mark on the chest. Very good player, Stephen Schwert. Was sadly missed when had to leave the ground last week against Norwood. Didn't play the majority of the second half. Kicks the ball, but it is well read by Anderson. Into Rowan Smith. Good handball onto Carruthers, who takes on two opponents. Follows up with a good handball through to McGuinness, who's got plenty of time. Puts the ball out in front of. Really not any option for him provided by the Port Adelaide forwards, but it is Lees who first to recover, picks the ball up, tremendous tackle by Stevens. High it's deemed, it's called play on, and Noah Callis with a fine snapshot puts through the first goal of the game. Sees Port Adelaide kicking with a two-goal breeze. Register their first one goal straight ahead of Central Districts, only one behind. Right, you can see in, in this passage of play, Lees has moved down from the back line, gathered the ball, got past the centrals player, got the ball on, fortunately to Malakellis, who finished off brilliantly. Mead now dropping back to pick up the taller Conway. Conway playing in the back pocket. Roger Delaney is on Simon Lures. So David Flood momentarily out at centre half forward. They compete in the centre. Bork, Will and Carruthers. McGowan flicks it up. Defensive handball to Herrera, who flicks it wide to the members' grandstand. 
tremendous contest between Wilson and Cotton, two youngsters which will really emerge in football in the coming years. Scott Stevens flicks the ball out. Some tremendous pressure here from all players. Good flick out, Rowan Smith. Tim Ginova forces the ball on, but Cook is perhaps his direct opponent. Number six for Central Districts turns in board, finds McGowan, who again has found space. Transfers play, but a poor kick, and Greg Anderson intercepts right in the centre of the ground. Good mark by Anderson. He was under some pressure from Saywell. Now Ginova in the middle of the ground, back into the side this week, and looking to do the biz. This is Carter from 55. Hodges has won out just a shove. The shorter pass is on, though, and it's David Brown. Now, Brown's not a whole lot better off, frankly. He's deeper and maybe five metres closer. And this will really test the leg. The breeze will help him. Bit of right post required. Launches himself at it. Didn't quite connect, but Hodges is there. And the big fellow takes a good mark. First at the foot, he helps, doesn't it? Big, strong pair of mitts, and they're not going to punch it away from him when he gets it in front like this. So it should be a good start for him. No problem you'd expect from there. Hodges, 601 career goals. Make it 602 as the Maggies get their second. I don't know whether that was really a, a pass meant for Hodges, but uh, the ball got there, but wasn't it interesting to see Stephen Carter move the ball onto Brown and Carter looks as though he's playing in the forward pocket. Well, what about Lees? Where is he at the moment? He's just drifting down. He's at half back and just wandered forward, so he likes to roam, doesn't he? He certainly does. He'll take uh, every opportunity that's offered to him and he loves to kick a goal. There is some interesting manoeuvres taking place. We've mentioned Potter picking up the hard-running Phil McGuinness of Port Adelaide. Hawkwell, named at centre-half forward, is now in the ruck. Opposing Crothers, who was named on interchange. There's, there's a little bit of little bit of happenings going on. Port Adelaide, two goals straight, lead Central Districts, one behind. The ball bounced in the air. Crothers with the long tap. Herrera in front position as he should be, but Poole with great tenacity dives on the football. It's all tied up and a ball up is the result. Peter, how are they going to manage that? Central have Balkwell in the middle and he's giving away many centimetres and they're going to lose that hand to ball, first ball every time. I mean, how are they going to manage that in the middle? I think, though, that um, uh, they'd rather have the bigger body opposed to the Port Adelaide Ruckman. They're not particularly big, and I think they're looking for a strength against strength. Carter on the end of a Genova kick, and it's another one for Port Adelaide. Number 36, Stephen Carter, normally plays on the halfback flank, is lined up up forward, and has finished off with the third straight goal for Port Adelaide, which is a great start in the opening minutes of this first quarter. We've been enjoying it, wouldn't he, Stephen Carter? That's a big move. That's a big move to put Carter up forward. Wakeman is a very dangerous player back there, but uh, I think they've pulled off a very good move, Port Adelaide, at the moment. So Stephen Schwert has his hands full with Carter. Eight minutes have gone, and the Magpies screeching out of the blocks. Three goals, Central just the one solitary behind. This time, Borkel gets a hand to it, so it's well done. Brown on the break to half forward and Carter again. Now, Central will want to close this down because it might be a match-winning streak here just at the moment. Geneva, high one, tough one. Laid down by Hicks. In fact, it was Lee. And it's swept up by Wakeland. Has a look at Stevens. The best marking power is with Carter. Puts the spoil on at the back. Loses feet. Stevens keeps a play on it, but Carter does very well. Wine dives on the ball. Daniel arrives late. Tough and tight and close. Quick give them the touch by Ginevra, allowed Malakellis the access to it. Puts it within about 40 metres of the goal, and Hodges is all on his own. Now, as he turns around, he's only got Lee there. The smother was affected very nicely. And Stephen Schwert, well, Stephen, you really should have taken it. Instead of being away down on the wing position, Port Adelaide will have another crack at it. Carter again in that passage of play, leading over, over to there, was uh, doing all the hard work. He's roaming around everywhere. Poole clears the ball as he so often does, just grabs the ball out of the air from those ball up situations. Malakellis, Stevens equal, body over the front of the ball. Back to Gurdum, Gurdum to Wine, Wine to Cool, through to Cook. Cook just turns and puts it to space where Bolkwell has positioned himself well with Carruthers. Carruthers playing in the ruck, running forward to the play, and Bolkwell simply going with him. Good kick by Bolkwell, 
right into full forward, but terrific crumb by Northeast. Fumbles, however, Cook on the follow up. That's magic to see. Great pressure by Benke, and the ball is cleared by Borlace. Tim Ginova picks the footy up. Great handball off the deck back to Rowan Smith. Great disposal per usual. This time caught out, and McGowan, who's already playing with influence. Read it beautifully, Ricky McGowan. To Gertham and Daniel now to centre half forward. Ken was talking about some of the happenings. Well, Bork will, will take the ruck work, and then he seems to be going to centre half forward. Brown gets it on centre wing, takes some time, wheels around, wobbly old kick, and a tough one to take. Wind is there, and so too Wakeland. Influential early, the short pass is excellent. Meters a pin, it goes towards Potter, and Potter's kick is ordinary, very ordinary. It allows Northeast to pick it up, play it on. Now Paul's just showing the effects of uh, a little lack of football at the moment. Not quite so clean with his possession rate. Brown, another one for him. To Schwert, who nonchalantly sits back and takes a nice mark. Total contrast to the one moments earlier. Transfers play to, play to Scott Lee, who was terrific in the first half last week. Forces the ball to the wing where it goes out of bounds. It's interesting, in the, just prior to that passage of play, that it's very dangerous squaring the ball between half forward and half back, and Central's paid, paid for that one. Out of wing, out of side. 17 points to Port Adelaide. Malakella smothered by Wind. Throw in again. Magnificent crowd in. And uh, they'd be enjoying this, particularly the Port Adelaide supporters. They've got out quickly. And with the danger of rain, a, a good start's important. My word it is. And uh, the pressure too. You notice the pressure that's being applied this early in the game by Port Adelaide. Northeast running onto the football. Puts the ball long. Scott Lee perhaps should have taken that great pressure by Carter and that is just magnificent to see a backman released to the forward line and yet he's prepared to lay the tackles he's not all one way Carter's been doing a tremendous amount of work and it's just not getting the ball it's tackling all those important things that count Geneva punches it out here's Stevens many possessions for him early Central, work it out. The pass just traversed the head of Brown. Oh, look out, Scotty Lee. A bit slow, giving the benefit of the doubt. That was a neat little two-metre pass. It finished up with Borkwell. He launches at it, and Potter's on the end of it. Took it, or did he? Umpire's calling play on around Potter's neck, and it'll close it down. Well, let's have another look. Right, again, the pressure of the game. These, these marks have to be taken, but there's pressure being applied out there. What are you talking about? It was a mark, wasn't it? Well, I think there's a lot of pressure on that player then. I don't think it was a completed mark. Brown and Stevens clash, but it's Daisy Borlase who emerges. Left foot towards McGuinness. Terrific play by Daniels. Swert with the football. Good evasive skills as he puts the ball back to half forward in front of the members. Good play off the ball by Potter. The ball released further by Central, but Northeast is just so good back there. Cleans it up well to Mead. And that kick did travel 60 metres. It was a good one as well. 56 is a new player. Warren Treadray for Port Adelaide. Dished out to Anderson across the top. Well done, Daniel. Central is stabilising here, but they need to get a score on the board. Here's Schwert. Nothing on the break on the left-hand side of Elizabeth Oval except the handball and it's wind. Across the top it goes. Carried about 15 metres. Wind on the break. Puts it up to half forward. The kick was beautiful. And Michael Wilson was never going to be able to do anything about that. Uh, that was uh, well played in front, the half forward flanker in front, well done. To Wine, Wine short pass, I reckon he had his eyes closed when he did that, but Simon Lewis has got it. Yeah, Lewis uh, hasn't played a lot of games this year, but uh, he's got plenty of talent, plenty of ability, could be very good for them as the finals approach. Well, the door opened up for him last week when David Flood dropped out, he came into the side, kicked three goals against Norwood, the kick has missed and I said that Central was stabilizing and starting to build they really needed to finish it off three goals instead the two points 14 minutes have gone yes it's uh, evenly poised really uh, there is a wind advantage I think Port Adelaide have got some score on the ball but they need to improve upon this with the worries Delaney on the kick out to Mead Mead further on to Lee so a good work from defense by the Port Adelaide side Spoil. terrific defense by Stephen Swert just got his fist there and enabled it, the ball to be pushed away from Warren Treadray, who perhaps as a youngster should have taken that on the hands out in front. Now they've made some amendments, by the way. Michael Wakeland's gone to Carter. I suspect that Stephen Wright's a bit concerned about the marking power of Stephen Carter. 
And hence he's put Michael Wake under him, taken Schwert off him and put Schwert onto the younger Treadray. So lots of games being played at the moment. Yes, I think it'll take a while before they all settle down. Yep. Rowan Smith couldn't get the quick hands out. And Potter finds the line. How do you view Potter lining up on McGuinness? It would be my view that we just couldn't go with him, frankly. Well, actually, uh, I've got a lot of time for uh, Potter, and he's um, a very desperate player, and I think uh, he'll stay there. He'll concentrate on the job. It's one thing, whoever Craig Potter does line up on, by the end of the day, that player will know he's played a game of football. As a ball up takes place in the half-forward line of Port Adelaide. They lead by 16 points, and we're about 16 minutes in to this first quarter here at Elizabeth. First playing fourth. Central District emerged with a footy through Saywell. Number 29, great kick to Borkwell. Borkwell, plenty of time in front of him, plenty of space in front of him, puts the ball. Kick. It's a poor kick. Reading it well is Mead. Puts it out in front of Binky, who has all day in front of him and finds a very open paddock. To Lees, and I'll change that comment about Borkwell. All he's doing is picking up Carruthers and playing him man for man, and hence he's ahead of the play. And Wakeland. A big impact so far. Named at fullback, but Hicks seems to have the job on Hodges. Good mark to young James Saywell. His kick now to half forward, Flood. Not seen anything of him so far, just raked the arms and did that okay. Then gets a second dip at it, but they'll close him down and we'll have another ball up. David Flood uh, didn't play last week through to a bit of hamstring soreness, so perhaps would be just warming his way into this game. Port Adelaide had the mo early momentum, but you can just tense, uh, you know, just sense rather now that Centrals are on the way back into this game. Little by little, but they need a score, don't they? Spoiled away by Treadray, because if you do all of the attacking, you don't get a return for it. Subconsciously, you start to believe that it's uh, it's not working for you. That's right, and uh, there are some good signs, though, just at the moment for them. Port Adelaide, 16 points in front. The ball thrown in to the advantage of Potter. Kicks the ball any old way, and she ends up about, well, almost in the gum trees here, Elizabeth. Brian Binky, the recipient of an out and a full free kick. So maybe there is a little bit more pressure out there than what we can see from here. That was uh, a very poor kick. Craig Potter has made a number of mistakes. Perhaps it's evidence of, I guess, the ageing legs and the lack of speed. Perhaps he feels he's under a little more pressure than he actually is. So he'll have to gain, regain his composure and really concentrate on the job. Well, the key players, Ken, really are the ones that we saw a bit down last week. Cook and Wine and Potter, as you're mentioning. They're the lads who were perhaps a little down last week, and if they're to beat Port Adelaide today and maintain that top spot, they have to get on top. And that mark will give him a great oh. deal of confidence. That kick probably sap him of it, though. Wakeland emerges with the football. Again, it's just a rugged old kick. Northeast couldn't even control it. That's how difficult it was in the air. Gurdham. He is fantastic, Gurdon. But unfortunately for Central, the rebound sees David Brown emerge with the footy and pop it to an unguarded Carter. He should be able to kick this goal. He's 40 metres out. He'll kick from 50 and he has a tail win behind him. Wakeland nowhere in sight. Certainly a long way away. But very elusive, Stephen Carter. Certainly that in, de in defence, so I don't see why it'd be any different in attack. His approach is good, the kick is equally as good. The fourth goal on the board for Port Adelaide. Stephen Carter's second, so a great move by coach Stephen Williams early in this game. That all came about really from that tackle in midfield. That, that got the ball out, the ball was handballed on, then across to Carter, and Carter finished off with a, a very good kick for goal. Yes, it was an excellent tackle by Anderson, but as Ken said quite rightly, Wakeland was miles off. He was just going, looking for a touch. No, it's not, uh, it's not hard to stand uh, uh, one person, that's for sure, and I think the coach would be very disappointed in Carter not being uh, checked very closely out there. Back to basics for Central early in this game. They're down. Very badly at the moment, 22 points of difference and Port Adelaide starting to wind up again. Brown doing some damage, got it from Ginova and back towards Ginova again from Brown. To within about 40 metres of the goal, this time Wakeland got himself in the front spot, just where he needed to be. And Daniel, well he can't do much with that because the Port Adelaide pressure up the front has been outstanding. 
I think Port Adelaide would be very impressed with the way the forwards are holding the ball in the forward line. Great pressure, great start. Bounce down. Four goals, plays two points. And again, another bounce down. Not controlling enough of the football at the moment, Central District. Another bounce down. Critical time for Central. Their whole season at the moment depends, I think, on reaching that minor premiership. And right here and now they need to rebound and get a win. Certainly get themselves back into this game as the ball gets squeezed across the boundary line. Again, the pressure. Uh, Central's had the players there that, on that occasion. We're unable to run it out. 22 points ahead, Port Adelaide. Throw in right in their forward pocket. Kicking to left of screen with a two or three goal breeze. Treadray almost handle it with the one hand. Daniels back to Swart, who clears Cook in front position. But it is Paul Northeast who just uses the safety of the boundary line. Will it get there? It will with the assistance of James Sable, number 29 for Central District, an up-and-coming youngster, played 52 games of SNFL football. And Northeast has been able to come right down the field, uh, and that's important to have uh, extra players down there for Port Adelaide. 21 minutes gone. McGowan, Craig Potter's gone for a spell in the forward pocket. Oh, it's a cruel bounce and ended up with uh, Borlase, and Borlase's left leg was superb. Stephen Carter's making a nuisance of himself up there. He's offering himself all the time as Carter, playing in front. That's where the forward should be, but a beautiful pass. Carter, only minutes ago, kicked a goal from a similar position, lining up for his third. We'll need to get a little more distance than the previous kick. And he can't manage it. Off to the right-hand side, out on the full. So Central Districts will clear the ball through Stephen Swert. They would be disappointed in that kick, Port Adelaide, then. He leant right back on that kick. He needs to concentrate. Uh, every opportunity with this breeze needs to be taken. Stephen Schwert. The leg carries about 50 metres. It's spoiled forward by Port Adelaide to Anderson. And Anderson, as quick as a flash, saw Brown out the corner of the eye. Brown now has Ginova. How many times has that little one-two worked so far? That's a brilliant goal from Ginova. Port Adelaide are on the mark. that have stolen the show here at Elizabeth Oval in round 20. And 22 minutes in, they take a five-goal break. 30 points to two. Yeah, another great goal, but hard work, hard work. Someone going in and getting the ball, getting it out, moving it on quickly, and then being very well finished off. And it is the small brigade of Anderson, Brown, Borlace, Geneva, Malakellis that are really leading the merry dance here for Port Adelaide. Rowan Smith on centre wing. It's also having a big influence in this game, early days. Five goals straight, Port Adelaide, leading centrals just yet to register. A big one, two points they have on the board. Umpire Tim Slevin, number six, bounces the ball. Big strong punch by Crothers. In front again, Harada. Rowan Smith can't quite control the footy. And great desperation shown by Jim Wind of Central District. Centrals will, Centrals will have to do something about uh, finding a Ruckman. They'll have to do something quickly in relation to that. Two right, they will. They're getting flogged in there. But underneath the hand, they're not doing much either. Just not getting hold of the football. It's not just the taps, it's this sort of running work. And Geneva has combined with Malakellis and Brown superbly. And here's McGuinness. Right leg. Beautiful kick. Around the body. Hodges is there. The pressure's really on that central defence, isn't it? Malakellis or Treadray around the body. And it just dribbles across the line. There's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of players moving down for Port Adelaide. They're dragging all the central's players into the back line. There's pressure applied there, but the, the kick was able to be uh, delivered. And now uh, Port Adelaide is still deep in their attacking zone. Schwert tries the contest on. Steve, uh, Scott Lee, quiet early for him. Schwert's in at the bottom of the pack, and such is the intensity at the moment. Neither side prepared to let the ball squeeze out. So five goals to two behinds. 28 points to difference. And sure, that breeze is worth a couple, but Port Adelaide are playing all over the top of the top ranked side at the moment. Cook goes from the air to Anderson and Sewell has the superior leg speed. He gets there first. Nice touch, wasn't it? A trip is about all that Ando could have afforded. That was very unfortunate. He got very close to getting him on that occasion. I think all he ever had intention of was getting hold of the leg at the end. To the middle. There's a look at Gurdam. Gurdam 
almost a centre half forward, having to stand his ground and getting clobbered whilst McGowan. Now here's an opportunity, but they won't get it because Michael Wilson is just too desperate. Great desperation there from Michael Wilson. Dived on the ball, held the ball up. And free kick. Free kick paid. Michael Wilson emerges with the football, kicks it to Brian Lees. He's running well from defence. The entire Port Adelaide half-back line, in fact, their full-back six, are running well. Running strongly. Lees with a big kick into centre-half forward. Poole brings it to the front, but Jim Wine, with his experience, in correct position, puts the ball in the direction of Lures. Carruthers with a spoil. Benke picks up the footy. Brown, but terrific tackle by him. No, it's high. It's deemed high. Probably correctly so. So it... Yeah. A desperate attack on the ball, and just prior to that, though, Crothers punching the ball away. There's a lot of discipline in the back line there for Port Adelaide. Brown's kick to Carter. Herrera read at the best. Short pass. Needs to be good. It is, and it falls into the arms of Borkwell. Well, Central really under the pump at the moment. They just can't get any movement going. They're kicking blindly from their half-back line. All except for that occasion there, where Borkwell got it. Lunges into it. Cotton couldn't quite complete it, kept the play in it. Peter Green's onto the ground now. McGowan's been well blanketed. Squeezes out. Stevens tries to go off the deck, can't do it. Ball lays. Just too much experience in there at the moment. He probably should be Daisy holding the ball, but the umpire was on the blind side. The umpire was on the blind side. Uh, he probably should have gone that occasion. There's a little bit of desperation with Central Seam kicking off the ground. The real feature of this game so far has been the defensive ethic of the Port Adelaide side. They really have harassed Centrals right out of it to this stage. Binky, left foot, puts the ball to centre wing where Jim Wind has read the ball well and takes the ball right in front of the members' grandstand. Kicks the ball in the direction of James Saywell, overruns it, Harada cleans up for him, back to Saywell. Good use of the footy to Michael Wakeland. That kick from Wind was terrible. That could easily have turned over and gone the length of the ground. Symptomatic of Central District's quarter. And I imagine that Stevie Wright will be so keen to get hold of them and give them a word or two at quarter time here at Elizabeth Oval that he'd be breaking his neck to get out of that coach's box. So at quarter time on ABC Sport, round 20, Port Adelaide needing to win to get back the double chance. They've made the break and they have a 28-point lead. ABC match of the round. First playing fourth. Central Districts two behinds. Port Adelaide five goals straight. The ball bounced high. Carruthers with the right hand. Emerging to, with the football is McGowan. Out to Stevens. Further on to Cook. Tim Cook kicks the ball long but dropping back Brian Lees. Good courage. Well crumbed by Michael Wilson who transfers play. Board. I think Port Adelaide had all the uh, uh, the numbers there and they certainly supported each other. Roger Delaney's got it. A long way from the goal mouth. But Mead is picking up Conway, who's playing at centre-half or full forward, I should say. Good take by Wakeland. The umpire's waving his arms around to call him on. They're under some pressure central and they're playing like it. Schwert to Stevens and Stevens not quite. But in the end, did find Borkwell, say well. They need an entry and they need a goal. They need it very quickly, Mark Conway. You're the man. It's just what they need. We were a bit critical at quarter time during the break, Pete, that they really needed Conway in the ruck, but you can't have him everywhere, can you? No, and he's uh, very dangerous up forward, and uh, they certainly need him to perform at this quarter going with the breeze. There's no question of that. 40 goal plus full forward. Approach is good. The kick is equally as good. And it registers the home side's first goal in the opening minutes of this second quarter. Port Adelaide a five goal straight. They lead Central Districts one goal, two behinds. Conway, too tall, get the ball up to him, go direct, and you give him every opportunity to, uh, to take the mark. Yes, he's proven that throughout the year that he can take a mark and kick a goal. And he's a tall man, as you see. Darren Mead's not short by any means, but he's giving a bit away. Going to be a key character. Bounce down in the centre. Two minutes just clicks over. Five goals to one goal two. It's good kicking by Port. We saw Norwood kick just 12-2 last week, and uh, they were deadly accurate. If another side does it to Central, they're going to be in strife. Good mark, though, by North Eastern half-back. 
Very courageous. Very quite stayed there under the ball. Paul Neath East uses the ball looking for Smith, but it's really a poor kick. Through a chain of handballs, Central District kicked the ball long into attack. Reading the ball well is Green on from interchange. Oops. The ball is a good bounce for Central. But meet equal to the task and forces it through for a rush behind. Central District's third. They go to one goal, three, nine. They lead, they trail by 21 points. Makes our game so great, the bounce of the ball, doesn't it? <laughs> so long as you're not trying to defend it going through the goals. Yes, it's an unpredictable bounce. Reading the bounce of the ball is a real skill. Mead, deep in the back pocket. Perfect execution and finds Brian Lees. Now Lees has the run and overlap of Brown to Anderson. There's some quality in the side, isn't it? To another bloke who's played half a dozen premiership games or premiership uh, outings. To another one, Geneva from Rowan Smith. Now Lee left to clean some work up at the back to Daniel. Good luck, Brendan. Caught. Holding the ball. Too hot. McGuinness from about 48 metres has Hodges. The entry is beautiful. Well, Brendan Daniel will be learning a lot about football today. My word. Uh, it's not over till the umpire blows the whistle and uh, a good attack on the player and great benefits for Port Adelaide on that occasion. Scott Hodges lines up for his second goal. He's 79th for the season. Played 156 games for Port Adelaide. A tremendous full forward. An outstanding full forward in this competition. Kicking against the breeze, a good approach, and a deadly accurate result in his second goal. Port Adelaide sixth, and they respond straight away to Central District's first goal. Port Adelaide six goals straight, 36. Lead Central District's one goal, three, nine. So the goal kickers, Hodges a couple, Carter two. And he's looking a bit lonely on the left side there, Mark Conway, but uh, he's the only goal scorer so far out of uh, a total of nine. And their first goal into the breeze. Very important. Sure is. Just coming up to five minutes. Gone of the second term. 36 plays nine. 27 points the difference. Brown and McGowan, they jostle as Carruthers and Bulk will compete in the air. It's all tied up between Cook and Geneva, so there's tremendous matchups in there. Midfield, James Saywell on the centre wing, playing against the much experienced Greg Anderson for Port Adelaide. They compete for the footy, and again it's tied up in there. The physical pressure has been terrific. A free kick has been awarded to Tim Cook, the left footed rover from Central. Flicks it on to Stephen Swart with a long left foot kick to centre half forward, but Brian Lee's read the ball well. He's played well, Brian Lee, so far. Just can't allow himself to be pushed out of the contest like that, Simon Lewis. McGuinness, Carter, he's like the phantom, he's everywhere. Short pass, Malik Ellis, beautiful again to Anderson. It's copybook stuff. Brown, Carter. I wonder if some of the boys from Central are going to pick some of the opponents up shortly. Treadray, here now is Wakelands. He turns around, there's not a thing on offer. What the old left foot screw punt. Oh, good luck, Peter Green. You're under the pressure as well. Tackle, and finds the boundary line. Now, really, it's about the only option he had. Yeah, but uh, I thought Port Adelaide overdid it a bit there uh, going forward. They sort of messing around with the ball. They should have been a bit more direct and possibly got the ball onto the boot. Too many handballs resulting in the turnover. Cook with the football tackled brilliantly by Poole. Playing at centre-half forward, Daryl Poole for Port Adelaide. Number 30, coming back from suspension. Will take most of the ruck work in the forward line for his team. Often grabs the football out of mid-air in these contests. This time Alex to try and punch it. Herrera perhaps more successful. Great tackle by Gurdon. Roger Gurdon, the captain of the Bulldogs. Tremendous tackle right in front of the members' grandstand. And don't they just love him as he transfers play into the centre of the ground to find his teammate, Brian Herrera. Quickly plays on to Scott Stevens. Stevens with Dash being chased by Rowan Smith. Kicks the ball long. Looking for Lewis, who sets himself binky down the front and square. Crumbed it beautifully. And they compete for the football out on the members' halfback flank. Northeast through to the running McGuinness. One bounce. Looks further upfield. A rusty old kick, but Borlase leads in the race to the footy. Will him or Hodges pick it up? No. 
Scott Lee, it is, who emerges with the footy and gets it back like a string. Oh, on a string. Tremendous play into Scott Stevens. Got a loose player here, the Bulldogs. McGowan, will he give it a cook? Yes, he does. All they need is a good disposal here. And they've got it to Jared Cotton. Magnificent play by the Bulldogs on the rebound. Jared Cotton, the recipient, number 44. You can't beat going down the middle of the ground. This is what Centrals did. They were able to have those loose players, but they've gone straight down the middle the short way home. Just interesting to uh, think back, the call of that, Stephen. The ball's gone round and round, almost like uh, around the racetrack. It just went, like it's almost like circle work, but tremendous play to see it come exactly as you call, Peter, right down the middle. Jared Cotton, the left foot. He's a half-forward flanker. He's a goal sneak, and he's effective. The Bulldogs land their second. Port Adelaide lead, though. Six goals straight, 36. Ahead of the Bulldogs, playing here on their home turf. Two goals, three, 15. Good mark taken by Jarrett, and he is a very good kick for goal. Uh, well done. Oh, they need some more of that. Quick entry and an ability to mark it, turn around and get a soft goal, as it were. Six goals, players two, three, eight and a half minutes have elapsed in this second term. And Central just clawing their way back in, little by little. The ball work and the touch in the middle is great from Port Adelaide. To Lee, who affects the spoil. Wakeland picks it up, should just go over the head now of Rowan Smith. And the old domes are playing on each other. Here they go. Stevens. And Rowan Smith gets picked off. I think he probably made that look much worse than it was, but the shepherd was legitimate. Spoiled forward by Mead. The best player is with Peter Green. He's given them some effervescence up the front. Borkwell. Here now is Green once again. I tell you what, though, Port Adelaide aren't that fond of him, and they'll get hold of him if they can, but they've given a free kick away. Well, he attacked the football, Peter Woit. You get the rewards. My word, it's a, a strong attack uh, towards the player with the ball, and this is a great football. This is what people want to want to want to watch and want to come and see. Well, Peter Green has spent some time in the resies, and like Simon Lewis, when the door opens on the doorstep of the finals, you just have to take it. He needs to kick goals, and he's kicked this one. So slowly but surely, Central get their way back. Six goals plays 3-3. Three, three. The margin's been whittled away at the nine and a half minute mark to 15 points. Right. And this, on this occasion, uh, it was a beautiful kick for goal. The hard work was done by the Central's team to get it forward, uh, and then they uh, certainly made the most of that opportunity. Umpire Justin Smith, number 16. About to bounce the ball here at Elizabeth Oval. First playing fourth. Borkwell taps the ball ineffectively in the end. But emerging with the football is Green, having just kicked the four goals. And that's a great thing, I reckon, to be able to do. It gives you confidence and a great boost if you can kick a goal and then go back to the centre field and emerge with the next disposal. And chase the football hard. Out on Central District's half forward line, Gurdham back to Cotton. Cotton tied up well and should be holding the ball. Think about that, Peter. Great tackle, uh, but I've already got. It's a great tackle, but I have got the impression that Centrals have come out with a lot stronger commitment towards the ball this quarter. Well, a 50 metre penalty is being put on. David Brown, who's been very influential so far in this game, gets a bit closer to goal. And as the 50-metre penalty is taking place, it's good to see the pattern of the Port Adelaide side. Benke, Carruthers, Lees, all running strong and wide to the opposite side of the ground. Plenty of run from half-back. Poole picks the football up, and Tim Ginever emerges with the footy. Is he successful? Yes, he is. Timmy Ginever's second goal. He is a magnificent captain. One of truly the very best captains in the competition. In fact, there's two of the better ones here on the park today. How important is it for someone like uh, Paul to dive on that ball? Almost a ruckman, but he gets low to the ground and he attacks the ball very hard. It's a very fine prospect, I believe, Daryl Poole. Oh, he's a must. He's a must. We've got Alan Stewart and uh, John Cale sitting down in front of us. We'll have a talk to them perhaps throughout the day. We'll just take the cans off and... See what they think about confirming some of your thoughts about their selections. Seven goals to 3-3. And Port Adelaide say to the Bulldogs, anything you can do, we can do equally well. Pool on the up. Oh, how's that for a quick tackle? Harada. A bit more of that, thank you, says the Bulldog coach. 
Daniel caught holding, uh, holding the ball a couple of times. And Goethe won't allow Paul to go anywhere. Great stuff. This is what football's all about. A strong attack on the on the ball now by both both players from uh, both sides. It's interesting to see Michael Wakeland probably emerging as a better player now in that duel between him and Stephen Carter. Tied up by Anderson is James Saywell. Another ball up will take place. Port Adelaide lead by 21 points. Kicking into probably a two to three goal breeze here at Elizabeth Oval. First place Central Districts are playing fourth place Port Adelaide. The ball forced by Poole in the direction of McGuinness. Tremendous composure over the top in the direction of Carter, but unsuccessful. Magnificent play by Scott Hodges to keep the ball in play. Carter is, emerges with the footy, puts it to the goal square. Nobody there except Rowan Smith. Can he run onto it and break the tackle? No, he can't. Tied up by Scott Lee. Oh. oh, that's a throw, surely. Not played by the umpire. Scott Lee, all the time he likes. Transfers play back into the centre corridor to find Ricky McGowan. So McGowan needing to get amongst the action just a little bit more. The kick is average. In fact, it's well below average. You'd get an F for that at your school. And it's taken by Northeast. He's not the best of kicks himself, but he found the target that time. Pool, Rowan Smith, you can't allow, allow him to sit out to Scott Stevens. Got through Scott Hodges as well and goes across the line. Some fundamental things just gone missing for a moment. Poor delivery then by Smith, very poor delivery, and you almost could see Scott Hodges basically gave up on that one. And would give him a mouthful too, wouldn't he? I would, I would think Scott would have had something to say about that. 21 points in front, Port Adelaide. It is in their forward pocket, but it's Brian Harada that emerges with the footy. Oh! Risky business. <laughs> Very risky business. But we'll play it all over again, Sam, as another throw-in will take place in the forward pocket. Good film, risky business. I liked it. <laughs> they actually went backwards there. Well, sometimes they go backwards, but I don't think he intended to go backwards, frankly. Boundary throw-in. Right in the heart of Port Adelaide's attacking zone. Geneva has two. Won't add to it yet, but Scotty Hodges might. If he holds on and holds onto that ball, he can't. It goes across the line. Actually, Scotty did all the hard work then, ran back uh, with the... Scotty did all the hard work, running back with the ball, but was just unable to hang on to it. It was a good, good centering kick by um, Timmy Genova. Third throw in in a matter of minutes in the forward pocket for Port Adelaide. Central Districts were successful in clearing two of those three. But again, another mistake by the Bulldogs. Potter fumbled. McGowan misses the mark. Gurdon fumbles. And McGowan again with a sloppy handball sees the resultant free kick, a high free kick and awarded to Daisy Borlase, who kicks the ball in the direction of Carter. Good body strength by Wakeland to push back in there. McGowan with the football smothered in tight by the Port Adelaide forward line. It's just all happening in there. A lot of mistakes by the Bulldogs and under pressure, Brian Harada clears the football, but netting well is Rowan Smith, who uses the football with perfection. His second left foot pass in the direction of Hodges in a matter of moments, and that one with total effectiveness. That's probably made up for the last one, Ken. Uh, th this is a much better kick from Rowan to the full forward, and a good mark by Scotty. It must be choppy out there when you see players the calibre of Rowan Smith not able to use the ball effectively, like... Money for old rope, that previous pass. Smith to Hodges, made up with it that one. A little bit of extra concentration. Hodges tries to widen the angle by running off the line, but not quite up to the task. And Port Adelaide registered their first behind for the game. Seven goals, 143, 42 point leaders over Central District. So Scott leads to bring it back into play. The rain is looming. If it comes down, it will suit Port Adelaide, simply because they're four goals in front. As James Saywell takes it deep in the half-back line. And Stephen Carter, that should be penalised. It's a bit silly, really. Yes, that's uh, really undisciplined play, isn't it? And you're in a the position there to, to make this mistake from an experienced play. You know you have to throw the ball back on the full. It's just such a feisty character. I mean, he's beautifully skilled, but every now and again, just does something a little bit silly. Spoiled forward. Central need a score and they need it quickly. Benke won't go anywhere. 7-1 to 3-3. Time is marching on for the Bulldogs. We're nearing time on. 
Brian Benke slotted him pretty well. He is. He's a, a very talented player. Some people suggest he s struggles a bit with the pace, but he makes up with the way he reads the play. Strong left fist by Benke. 20 metres that covered. And the tackling is just ferocious. The ball ups, there has been many. Throw ins, there have been many. The physical presence has been there by both teams. Davis Flood is there, Ken, but um, where has he been when the ball's been there? He's been operating between full forward and centre half forward. He's yet to get into the game, that's for sure. Again, it's the desperate attack by Port Adelaide players at the ball, holding the ball there. Port Adelaide by 22 points, kicking against a two or three goal breeze in the second quarter. McGowan with the football. Again, missing the target. Need to take Roger it. Gurdham plays the footy in front of him. Stephen Swert, left foot at the corner of his eye. Look for Balkwell. Unsuccessful as the Port Adelaide defence clear through McGuinness. And McGuinness has done marvellously well. Right into the path of Brian Smith. Maybe Saywell's got him now. I think Stephen has switched wings. So Stephen Wright's a bit concerned. Bad luck, Ando. Couldn't quite get a hand on it. The Bulldog supporters love it. Don't they rub it in? Out the back, Cook. He's going to be confronted by Big Carruthers. Good enough to get away the handball to Green. And now back to the little cookie monster once again. Around the body he goes and finds a player. Enter stage right, David Flood. And about time. All right, it was... The Port Adelaide were very unlucky. Anderson could not get the ball on. Central's took possession of the ball and have taken advantage of it. David Flood, life member of the Essendon Football Club, transferred across to Elizabeth this year, grew up in the country town of Nil, which is about halfway between Melbourne and Adelaide, and will need to exert a big influence on this game if his team is to emerge as victors. Unsuccessful there with his accuracy towards goal. Unfortunate, three goals for Central Districts, trailing Port Adelaide, seven goals won. Yeah, that, that goal needed to be kicked on that occasion. I mean, he's a very experienced player and he should uh, make mincemeat of those sort of shots. Well, they're the runs that you really do count on. Like Stephen Wright would be absolutely livid. You're kicking with the breeze. It's the simplest of goals from your key goal kicker. Particularly since Port Adelaide have fixed 7 1. Brown. The pressure is applied by Cotton, not before he gets the kick away to the far side. Poole, second to it. Herrera got himself first access to it in the kick. Now that should be in the back. Tim Geneva flew like an unregistered parrot. <laughs> Pushing the back. Would have been a very small parrot, you're <laughs> suggesting. <laughs> He'd be happy with the replay of that, Timmy, though, to see himself actually get off the ground. Good defence by Port Adelaide as they clear the ball back to centre half forward. It is Herrera who has read it. Brown, Cook, the pressure is just magnificent in there from both teams in difficult conditions, perhaps, with a blustery wind. Lauras emerges with the football back to Swert, who sits back behind the play well. He lobs it to the goal square. It's a poor miss in the end by Carruthers. I thought he could have. Just a touch, I think. Really snap. Oh, it was touched off the boot. Look as though there was a little touch on it just before oh, it okay. got to him, so. Made it tough for him to take it. Time on. And Central are under the gun. 7-1 to 3-5. The breeze has just picked up a bit at this stage of the game. Hasn't it just? The windsock is horizontal. 103 games for McGuinness. Been a good recruit. Anderson. And Greg Anderson. He's going to be a very valuable performer for them in the finals with the double chance or without. At this rate, they'll get it, though, you'd imagine. They have a game in hand. Brown, deft little touch on the right leg. Had a look at Lees. And at centre-half forward, they really need to pick Lees up because he runs too far and wide. Malakellis back to Brown, who runs and runs and runs and generally kicks pretty well also. Great play by Port Adelaide, and the run of Brown is most important. Even the run of Lees coming up the ground to make take advantage of it and then Brown uh, continuing to run and a beautiful kick to the full forward. Well, look at David Flood, Did, didn't offer the chase and uh, just made it too easy for the players upfield for Port Adelaide and too hard for Central. Hodges lining up for his third goal. 40 metres out, kicks in a difficult win but he's looks like he's not quite equal to the task. Port Adelaide register, only their second behind. 
they have a comfortable 21 point lead. Not so surprised he's missed it, you know, because as Peter was just mentioning, it's turned into a force 10 gale from right of screen to left. And if the agitator gets onto it, he might put it up to centre half forward. Decides to go wide. Up and under. Still carried the 50. And Treadray took a good mark. Warren Treadray, second game for him. A little up and under as well. And that will demonstrate the strength of the breeze. And the mark is taken by Stephen Schwert. Schwert, who has really come into the game in the second quarter, often receives the ball from a defensive handball. In that situation, it was a terrific mark. He transfers play to Wakeland. Wakeland out in the direction of Green. Green with the handball back onto the running. Stevens, who was able to control the footy. A poor kick, but it's a good result. Jimmy Wine, the recipient, snaps towards goal. Running back is Darren Mead. And he is successful in trapping the ball right in the last line of defence. Transfers right across the other side of the ground where Rowan Smith runs onto the footy. Flicks it inboard to Malakellis. Malakellis fumble, but it's cleaned up by Geneva. Back to Delaney. Again, an indication of the run out of defence of the Port Adelaide. In the direction of McGuinness and Herrera. Herrera with body strength turns the football back into attack, but it's cleaned up by Crothers. Crothers settles and puts it back again to an unmarked Delaney. Delaney plays it on from half forward, and it begs the question of how Lees, Delaney, and those lads can be so far up to the forward line without the chase being put on. A genuine chase, I'm talking about, not a token but a genuine chase, and this is Balkwell. They're making hard work of it, Centrals, at the moment. Uh, kicking short, uh, you know, coming back into the middle there, I think was probably inappropriate at this point. Oh, Stevens. Stevens wasn't that deadly. He really needed to take that one. He did, granted, but if it had got out the back, they were away, Port Adelaide. Ugly old kick. One point of the square to the other. Flood sitting in the back spot. Too high on McGowan, is it? And the umpire calls play on, it was McGowan, and the kick now goes forward. But uh, Conway gives away a bit of agility, I hear, I would imagine. Gives it to Cotton. If he gets inside, he's OK. Now you shoot, Jarrett, and you must score. You must score a goal if Central to be any chance. He misses. Through for behind. Good power with his body, though, Jarrett. Then he was able to break the tackle and, uh, unfortunately, couldn't finish it off. So it's Port Adelaide by 20 points. Fourth place, Port Adelaide. And an important game, very important game, playing first place Central District on Central's home deck. Binky. A poor kick finds the opposition, Simon Lewis. 60 metres out from goal, surely too far. He passes it off, centres it up. Scott Lee drifted down from defence. Scott Lee, 70 metres from goal, puts the ball out in front of an unmarked David Flood, and he'll take this. Only 30 metres from goal. 45 degree angle and hopefully register the Bulldogs fourth. Really was poor checking by Port Adelaide on that occasion. Uh, they had the opportunity, they had possession of the ball to come out wide. They didn't come out wide enough. It was a turnover and Centrals have made the most of that opportunity with an unmarked flood. So David Flood as the, well the umbrellas are up across the far side. I was going to say it's threatening to rain but it's obviously coming down. Flood from 40. Still can't score on it. Forward, now out of bounds. <coughs> 26 minutes gone. Central desperately needing a goal. They're going to be up against it in the third term, trying to crash his way through was Flood. He won't get through that big pack of players. One or two little jabs going on down there, and the umpire is going to say what? Nothing, just cool it. What's happening there, Peter? A little bit of pushing and shoving at this stage. Uh, I don't think there's anything serious. Uh, I think the umpire is still going to ask for the ball, or is he going to give it to a Central's player? No, he's. I think he's asking for the ball. Central's trying to con uh, the umpire. Umpire Kevin Chambers, who's the man with the ball in hand, not having a, any part of that whatsoever. He's bounced down amidst a big pack of players. Gets pushed wide. You won't get through. A quick snap now from Cook. Well, he's deadly in front of goals. Now, they've got wind on, but it looked in the flesh as though it was Cook. We'll just have another little look. 
Watch carefully. Yes, it's wind, I think. Out to James. And wind snap was excellent. So well done, our cameraman. And uh, I thought it was cooked because it was a trademark cookie monster goal. Uh, a very, very important goal at this stage of the game. Just a couple of little jabs here, as I was talking about before, Peter, that you can see just being popped in a couple of spots. Anyway, as you said, nothing too serious. Here's wind again. The margin's back into 14 points. And 27 minutes gone. One more for Central. will really crack this game on the head for Port Adelaide because they made the break. They made all the running. And with the rain coming down, if it could be a reduced margin to about uh, eight points, then you've got a ball game. My word. I think it's important now uh, for Port Adelaide to uh, defend here, keep the ball out wide, and uh, not allow Centrals to score before half-time. Stevens. They just might, though. Oh, across the back, Flood stood his ground pretty well, but sitting back was Conway, went in the opposite direction. Allowed me, just a little bit slippery as you see, looking for some space. Saywell, one on two situation though. Saywell should have perhaps known that he had Stevens. Oh, it's gone out of bounds on the full. What a blunder. Well, it was two on one. Actually, the umpire's giving this uh, for holding the man, and so it'll be Saywell with a free kick rather than Anderson for the kick out on the full. Tough call, really. Stevens is wide, but Lee is shorter. And Scott Lee's got it. Time is running out for them. Short pass, in fact, it's run out. And Ricky McGowan, he'd be tempted to go back and have a kick, but he'd want to kick at about 90 metres. So good luck, lad. Launches himself at it and gets to within about 25. So half time here at uh, Elizabeth Oval, and still the boys are going on with it. Brown, oh, he looks fierce, doesn't he? If only looks could kill as Borlase gets dragged to the ground. I think Peter Green is probably one of the lads that they'd uh, like to get at, and Lees is certainly making his presence felt, and now all of them are making their presence felt. Plenty of spirit between Port Adelaide and Central there, Peter. Yes, it'll certainly keep their uh, mind on the job, something like this. I don't know whether it's good for the game, but uh, uh, it's good to see, I, I guess, from the coach's point of view, that everyone's still staying there. They're all still supporting well, their teammates. Much. See, the thing that's dangerous about this is that the, the players aren't the only ones on the ground at the moment because at these suburban grounds, the spectators are allowed to stream on and it potentially, although not in this case, but potentially could be very dangerous. Now, one player's had his number taken, Tim Cook. So Tim Cook and we think Paul Nelfeast have been reported as well and Cookie well, looks a bit groggy. The ball bounces, Borkwell versus Carruthers. Carruthers down, but it's McGowan and Geneva who can Pete Potter in there also. In fact, they're all in there. And another ball up will take place. Port Adelaide, seven goals, two, 44, leading Central Districts, who are on top of the ladder. Four goals, six, 30. So it's a 14-point break to the Magpies, which was orchestrated in a magnificent first quarter of football. Poole flicks the ball further afield, Gurdham. Carruthers, slippery it is. Great handball by Lee to McGowan to Cook. Puts the ball long, it bounces. Cotton tries to flick it to advantage of Green. Following up Cook, Binky with a long kick to space, but it's Scott Lee, ever so reliable. Reading that play well. Further on to Jared Cotton. Turns on the left foot and puts it out in front of David Flood. They'll need a lift from him, will the Bulldogs. Simon Lewis picks the ball up. He's got plenty of time. Oh, it's a poor oh, kick. Oh, dear. It really was a poor kick in the end. And it was very lucky to not go out in the full. Big Conway is able to keep it in play. And tremendous desperation sees him emerge with the football with an opportunity to go. And it's again gone straight across the face of goal where Roger Delaney sits back and says, thank you very much. Well, how unfortunate was that for the Bulldogs? It very, but wasn't there a lot of mistakes made then? On, on, the ball is a little bit greasy, I know, but there was, uh, it was going from one side to the other, a lot of mistakes. How kind are you? Well, I think, Unlucky. It's, I think it's probably a fair assumption to say the ball is pretty difficult to handle. It is greasy since they have left the arena prior to half time, and it is the opening minutes of this third quarter as Potter Drives the ball in long, looking for the big Conway and Flood Delaney again. 
overrun by Carruthers. He punches to the safety of the boundary line. And, well, the umpire did deem that as not deliberate. So, all fair and square. Well, my, my point was that Lewis had a chance to go across the top, decided against it, and his kick was ordinary. And then Conway had an opportunity to hit the head of a square, but he took a pop shot from an almost impossible angle. But they're still on the build-up. Green, Borkwell, now he's in front. And according to that uh, Barmy Army standing behind, he's finished it off, he has. So they get their fifth on the board. Borkwell his first. And they close the gap to eight points at the two and a half minute mark of the third turn. Borkwell was uh, just hovering around there at the centre. He saw the opportunity. He's gone forward. And a very good kick considering the conditions and a, and a very important goal to Centrals. Certainly was a very important goal. Always an important goal. The first one after the long break. Umpire Tim Slaven bounces the ball in the centre of the Elizabeth Oval. Carruthers again with the tap. They've just been so dominant in there at Port Adelaide. Ooh. Brown, he's tidied up by Gurdon, but no, oh, he's no. paid a free kick. What for, you ask, Peter? Yes, uh, I didn't see a lot in that one, but uh, important possession for Port Adelaide. Brown kicks the ball in the direction of East Port Adelaide forwards. Hodges with the football in front of him, but it's good pressure there. And the result will be a throw in in the forward pocket for Port Adelaide, kicking with the breeze in the third quarter. They lead by eight points. Boundary throw in. As the sun starts to peek its way through again, Port Adelaide, if they get another one now, they'll just stop this little bit of a charge that Central have up early in the term. And Carter still at half forward, it would seem. Yes, they've got Carter down there. Uh, he played well in the first quarter going with the breeze, and his uh, uh, body power down there will be most important. The spoil to pull around the body goes Anderson, I think. And he's kicked it. Magnificent snapshot from Ando. He gets his first for the day, and Port Adelaide keep the dogs at arm's length. Most important to have uh, a left footer around in those situations, and uh, he certainly used that to uh, the side's advantage. Port Adelaide, eight goals, two. Leading Central Districts, five goals, six. Back to 14 points, as it was at the long break. Daryl Poole again instrumental, just with that quick little handball out to Anderson, who finished with a fine goal. Having a great duel on centre wing with James Saywell, number 29 for the Central District's Bulldogs. Bounce in the centre of the ground. Borkwell and Carruthers. Carruthers yet again. Down to Gurdon. A rough old kick finds Northeast at half back in front of the members. Paul Northeast. Only as far as Gurdon. Roger plays it on to half forward. A couple of options. Cotton stood his ground. Oh, magnificent work from Wilson on the spoil. Now, Tim Cook will be a little careful of where he puts his nose at the moment, I imagine. Lewis, Cotton, no option on offer. Oh, the sidestep was fabulous as he kicked it up. He just couldn't get enough balance to get it straight on line. Through for behind. Nice little fame, though, wasn't it? It was, and a very talented player. He's got all those skills, even considering the conditions he was able to bulk around and have a shot. A fame or a bulk? Well, it was very effective, but I, I would think that young Michael Wilson would have to learn a bit from that. He knows Jared Cotton's very left-sided. Should have read that perhaps a little better. As the kick out by Delaney is received by Potter. Potter will come into this game now with these conditions. Kicks the ball long, looking for Cotton again. Is over the oh. back and he leaps high to take the mark. In the end, basically back on the ground. But it was a great mark all the same. It was back on the ground. Should be able to take this opportunity to register Central District's sixth goal. Actually, it was a sloppy kick out from Port Adelaide, really, uh, to no one in particular. Central's took advantage of it, uh, but that was a great individual effort. So Cotton gets one. Has it carried? Has it carried? Yes, it has. And Jared Cotton at the six and a half minute mark, having kicked one in the second, has now kicked one in the third as well. Jared Cotton uh, playing on the half forward flank. It's a uh, very difficult position to, to stay in the game all day. So uh, once again, if we if he can get uh, his one goal a quarter, that uh, will certainly do us. Port Adelaide, eight goals, two fifty. Potter's got a free kick. A little Seven bit of fisticuffs. And Central Districts as Potter emerges with a free kick out of the mid midfield. 
And another free kick to the Central District Bulldogs. The crowd, the home crowd here, just love it. Their captain, Roger Gurdham, the recipient. Well, I'll tell you why Potter got the kick as Gurdham plays it on. Conway can't. He got the kick as it's cleared away because he stood on Brown's toes. Brown dispatched him. The umpire saw the dispatch and gave the free kick away. And it's always the case. The retaliator always, almost always, I should say, is the one that gets caught out. And Brown has been a particularly important player, and that's why he's getting the attention now. Throw in. 60 metres from the Bulldogs' goals. Member's side, McGowan. It's just tied up in there. Interesting to see whether this is a bounce or a throw up. Conditions are reasonably good now for genuine hard, tough football. Carruthers, big smash with the right hand. Stevens holds his footing well. Breaks the tackle from Smith and uses Close. the ball with perfection to Borkwell. Borkwell, get back quickly, son. He looks for the leading Conway. He's going long for the ex looking for the extra height. Central District Smalls must get in there. Through comes Flood out to McGowan. Cook. Brown. Green. It's all happening in here. It's just plenty happening. Smith with great experience. Flicks the ball onto Brown. He runs onto it. Borkwell, good use of the body. Gurdham on it. This is fantastic play by Central District. Stevens has the goal faced open. He looks for it. It's into the goal square. They rise high. Flood. Wilson clears. Quite right, they need some of the smaller players in there to feed off because Conway's hands at the ball every time. Schwert, what about this time? Three in a row, more precise this time, and Cotton, who has two, gets on the end of it. Doesn't look very happy, Stephen Wright, but surely a little easier in the breathing. My word, and uh, it showed up a, a little bit there with Darren Smith there, not as agile, and uh, Schwert was able to get the ball forward, and Jared Cotton's moving around, giving great opportunities to, for his side. Seven points the difference. It'll be one if he kicks it. He has. The dogs are back within a point. Peter Green loves it. The kids behind love it. And nine and a half minutes gone, we've got a one point ball game. You see here, Darren Smith can't really keep up. Sweat was able to get the ball on and plenty of space for Jared Cotton. Jared Cotton's kicked his third goal, and he's side behind only by one point. Potter and Brown, they're two tough nuts, right at it. Big smash by Carruthers, down to McGuinness, quickly with the left foot in the, to his forward line. Scott Lee leads the race with a football, he can't toe poke it to advantage. Oh. And Smith can, it's in the open, but it's Dean kicking in danger. And Stephen Swert will receive the free kick. Good decision by the umpire. Interestingly, Darren Smith, who gave the free kick away, started on the interchange bench, which wouldn't have happened as good mark is taken by Carter. But that would not have happened too many times in uh, Darren Smith's career, you imagine. Towards full forward, McGowan off hands, around the back, beautifully read by Lee, the kick. Needs to be precise, and it is. It falls into the arms of Herrera. Herrera now to Saywell. Saywell's little chip kick finds Gurdon. The build-up is all right now. Roger sweeps it across the top. Here's the little cookie monster. Away he goes inside half forward. Has a look at Conway and finds him. Oh, Central are alive. Great play by Central. He's coming down the middle. Great play. Coming down the middle of the ground. Shortest way home. Forwards in front. What more do you ask for? Smith off the ground for Treadray. Conway, 50 metres out for goal. A big left foot kick into the breeze. It's not going to quite carry. Spoiled over for a behind from the right-hand fist. Yes, uh, Mark Conway, uh, when he came to the club last year, he was uh, probably uh, a little overweight and a little lazy. This year he's really turned that around and uh, his training has been great. I won't say he's the, the best trainer, but he, uh, he certainly is enjoying it more. And, you know, we expect him to kick uh, one goal a quarter, which, uh, you know, if we can get four goals for us every game, he's going to be a very good player and a very hard player to match up. He's a hard player. And here he is again. Right on cue, Mark Conway. He's not going to get his one a quarter today. He got one in the second. At the one-minute mark of the second term, it was Central's first goal for the day. And it was a very important one, too, because Port Adelaide had kicked the first five in a row. 
You'd have to ask now, though, who, who really is on Conway? We've got uh, full back on Flood, uh, and Conway's just running around there at the moment. Back him in, Ken. Well, he's only got to score to put his team in front. Kick. A long kick, right up towards uh, the head of the square. Port Adelaide defended well. Through McGuinness. Clears the ball to the open space of the members' grandstand. Brian Harada leads Darrell Poole to the football, who lets Scott Stevens know that he shouldn't have been in the way. Good play by Green. Strong body. Good flick to advantage. The little one percent is coming into effect. Stevens not able to pick off McGowan as Brown intercepted with magnificent reading of the play. Oops. Rowan Smith. Gee, there's an ordinary kick from Rowan. High into the air and straight to his bookend in Scott Stevens. Stevens through to Stephen Swert. Kicks a football long in the direction of Lures. But dropping back well, Brian Binky. Brian's kick from half back to half forward. Treadray's on the end of it. This is Warren Treadray. If you joined us at the start of the show, you would have heard Stephen Williams talking about what an exciting prospect he is. The kick's beautifully weighted, but Lee gets in the way. Pesky, isn't it? Now Malakellis tried the sweep shot, looked a bit soccerish. And Hicks, who has the job on Scott Hodges, it goes across the line. SANFL update, Sturt playing Glenelg, and they lead by 10 goals. Cannot believe Glenelg. North Adelaide over West, and West are in front there by 32 points. Norwood play South Adelaide a little later tonight. Preamble to the Crows and North Melbourne game, and North Adelaide and West Adelaide. Well, that game is for the five. Really, it's quite simple. The scores are even here, and we're in for the remaining 45 minutes of this game promised to be very exciting. 50 points apiece. Greg Anderson with the football, but pressured well by Saywell in there. Harada with the footy, flicks it over the top to Gurdham, who uses the ball with a tremendous kick out in front of Simon Lewis. Probably a left-hand fist in there somewhere from Brian Lees, and it finds the safety of the boundary line on the outer side here at the Elizabeth Oval. Seven goals, eight Central District. And exactly the same scoreline. Eight goals, two Port Adelaide. So it's 50 points each in what has been a magnificent game of football, which will now be played in the toughest of conditions. Well, Central Districts have come out with all the spark. After the half-time melee, Centrals have come out with a spark. Port Adelaide just don't seem to have it, what they had early in the game. Balkwell with a contest. And the boundary line wins it. So 50 points apiece, 15 shots to 10. But in front of a very good crowd, the scores are tied away. And they've had some grand contests over the last couple of years. At Elizabeth Oval last year, 69 points the difference in favour of the Bulldogs. It won't be anything like that today. Potter, Borlase, fairly quiet Borlase today. Pool, Benke. Wearing number 24, Harada. And Harada can't take it. Scott Lee needed to keep feet, couldn't do it. Here's Stevens. The ball's a bit slippery, it's tough to take. McGuinness. Oh, good luck. Stevens swoops on it. Needs to pick it up and do it cleanly. Can't do it though. Port Adelaide. Burgoyne's onto the ground and again will have a jump ball. Well, in these conditions, the umpire's, the umpire's letting it go in these conditions. However, he's pulled one out now and it's a free kick to Port Adelaide. Really. It's been terrific with his work rate, has Phil McGuinness, number 23 for Port Adelaide. Kicks the ball long to the half forward line. Up high oh. and tremendous, a tremendous mark taken by Warren Treadray in only second game of league football. Kicks the ball in the direction of Carter. Carter's got this surely, yes. 30 metres out, difficult angle, very important kick. Stephen Carter's been a success there today in the forward lines. This is an important kick. A bit stop and start Port Adelaide at the moment, just taking the mark and then, but there was space there for him to move into and a good mark. And I might have been a bit kind with my meterage, perhaps 40 metres out. His kick. kick is, however, Spot on. equal to the task, and that is his third goal, playing in the forward pocket today, away from his customary half-back flank. Potter leaving the ground for the Central District side. Looks like carrying an injury. Jimmy Wine to come on. So Port Adelaide respond. They hit the front, nine goals to 56 to seven goals, eight, 50. Stephen Carts, well, the uh, 
the hairiest man alive, the woolly mammoth at halfback flank there, runs off, powerful running player, long kick, and I'd have to say a definite AFL chance. The mammoth, eh? Well, there are bigger blokes than him, but uh, he's done his job at half forward today or through a forward pocket, three goals, and that is unexpected. Bounce down in the middle, spoiled forward. Ginova, the run now from Malakellis and Port started to get wound up. That's a very ambitious thing to do, Tony. Take a bounce and the good mark was going to be taken, but Daniel missed it. Off the ground goes McGuinness, and he's hit the post. Hooey. Now, tough, tight game. What would it be like out there? Oh, it's tough. The conditions are tough. Uh, Port Adelaide are going, are going with the breeze, but uh, a great kick off the ground. Take the opportunity to try and score a goal. Came very close. And McGuinness is often capable of just extracting something magical. Great mark over the back from Balkwell. Number 11 for the Bulldogs. Combining rucks and a half forward. In the absence of Big Schaefer, their usual number one ruckman. So they're having a little difficulty in centre field. Are the Bulldogs. Take. That was a terrific take by Brian Haroda. Well, Port Adelaide are uh, really putting it on them. They won't let any central player take an easy possession. No, they're certainly all, everyone's manning up. But it's getting real serious stuff now, and everyone's having a real good dip from both sides. Great football. Wakeland hit. McGowan needs to uh, get something out and does. Now Wakeland under some more pressure. Only as far as Rowan Smith. Tim Cook just a little tentative at the moment. Carter won't be. And goes across the line. Wine went after him. And finally the ball goes across the line. And it'll be interesting to see, last week, the Bulldogs had an epic encounter where there was one point in the result, and so many of the Port Adelaide players, five of them, have come back into this side. A few from suspension, a few from injury, so the fitness levels will be really tested. Well, he's bleeding again, Tim Cook, and he's in all sorts of trouble. The trainers are trying to get at him. The adrenaline's making him push the trainer away, but he looks pretty sore at the moment. Now Burgoyne, to let him get hold of him, will screech away. Daniel's got a bit of pace as well, though. Who's going to get first access to this footy? It's going to be Burgoyne. And he kicks it along the line in front of a magnificent crowd on the outer hip. They braved the uh, the rain at half time. And Tim Cook really should go from the ground with that. Yeah, uh, but he is very important to the Central's team. They need his legs, and uh, he wants to stay out there. Stephen Schwert. I thought he might have ducked into that. But Brian Herrera it was who's going to get the free kick. And Herrera kicks the ball long from half back to half forward, looking for lures, but equal to the task, Brian Binky, number 24 for Port Adelaide. Kicks the ball inward, finds Greg Anderson, who left-hand handball finds Timmy Geneva running on. The ball's kicked long, Rowan Smith in the slot, over the back comes the Central District's defence. Scott Stevens emerges with the football, through northeast with good body strength. Geneva followed up well, receives the defensive handball in the direction of Hodges. Will he take it? Great defence from Hicks. Got that right fist just in time. Spoiled it away as they compete 25 metres out from goal. Yes, holding the ball. Stephen Schwert dragged it back under. Big decision by the umpire. Big decision right in front of goal. Well, I think it's the right one, to be honest, because Stephen dived on it. He dragged it back underneath. When really, perhaps the option was as Burgoyne did just 30 seconds earlier, was kick it to the boundary line. Umpire Kevin Chambers, very experienced. Scott Hodges lining up for his third goal. Seven points in front, Port Adelaide. And a lot resting on this kick. Port Adelaide kicking with a slight breeze in this third quarter. His approach is good. And his execution is perfect. Hodges' his third goal. And Port Adelaide now go out to a further lead, 10 goals, 3, 13 points over Central District, 7 goals, 8. Well, it's a real benefit here for forwards, though, when the ball's in there, not only to uh, try and get it themselves, but to hold it in there. If they keep persisting, they can get the benefit, and they certainly got it on this occasion. Actually, having a look at that again, we really didn't have much chance, and Scott Hodges finished it off. Scotty Hodges. Well, what can you say about this bloke? He's been fantastic. He's won the Gary medals, been a leading goal kicker year after year with us. One on one, one of the best, strongest marks I've seen. Certainly is. He's a champ. Cook has gone from the ground. 
wide now. There's a lot of pressure on him to get some of those uh, bottom of the pack balls, particularly when the weather's like it is. Malakelis, McGuinness, the tackling's excellent. Balkwell was quick on it. And again, a central player has possession at the bottom. Once bitten, twice shy, you'd imagine, but Schwert this time emerges with it, pushes it back. Benke, Peter Green's the only one there within Cooey. Lewis arrives late. Benke got it from Geneva, and his kick towards half forward is deep, and it's wide, and Burgoyne, if he can get around the player, Daniel, he does it beautifully. Needs to hit the head of the square, just what he did, but Lee didn't he read that beautifully. Just sat back and took an excellent, and in the end, I guess a quite straightforward mark. Great player, Scott Lee, one of the favourites for the McGarry medal. Transfers play into his captain. He's tied up, the ball's released. Back to David Brown, into Hodges, who drops the oh, chest mark, yeah. but it's paid the free kick. A difficult mark it was to take, but it was deemed in the back. I'm not sure about that. We'll have to look at that on replay. Well, you've got two contentious ones now, Peter. Yes, I think Scotty slipped more than anything uh, when he first tried to go for that uh, that ball. And then, uh, well, the umpires made the decision. Can't be uh, changed now. Very fortunate, I think, though. Well, he will change it if something ridiculous happens, but uh, off the ball. But he's going to, for all intents and purposes, take a shot from about 15 metres out. And two soft ones for them. And blows the margin out to 19 points. Very hurtful. Hodges now. Won't have a problem with this. Picks his fourth. One in the first, one in the second. Now a couple in the third. Stephen Williams there at the front. Puffing. And at the 23 and a half minute mark, he should be breathing a little easier himself. Well, you play in front uh, and you get the advantage if you are in front. So uh, that was the occasion then. It'll be interesting to see though, this next centre bounce. Uh, I don't know about you, Ken, but I haven't seen Centrals win one from the centre so far. No. It's been the left hand. Sturt, Glenelg, Sturt have uh, eked it out to 67 points. North Adelaide and West Adelaide, North getting a bit back, 24 points of difference. As Green emerges with a footy. So perhaps that is the first effective or one of the rare effective clearances. It's not even that effective in the end by Central District from a centre bounce situation. Central Crowd are getting a bit upset, aren't they? Oh, they're very vocal. They're very passionate about their football, both of these clubs. As we've seen at halftime, where a melee took place, a couple of reports possibly. It's been all happening here today. Rowan Smith receives a high tackle from Simon Lewis. Daryl Poole lets Lewis know that that's just not acceptable. Well, Lewis and Poole, of course, head to head as the ball goes across the boundary line. Those two head to head in the qualifying final a couple of years ago. So they uh, just lurking around one another, looking perhaps for a bit of a square up and both going for a ruck contest here in front of the grandstand. Spoiled down by North East. Oh, didn't ground do well. The ball A's to tread rate. I'd just like to highlight what a terrific handball that was from Brown, being pressured but was still able to get it to the advantage of his teammate. Hodges spoiled away from him and across the boundary line. Score check is 11-3 to 7-8. 19 points of difference. You're right, Port Adelaide have got a bit of breeze behind them. And Central will have it in the last term, but if it's wet and slippery and the legs are heavy, it's going to be pretty tough. My word, it's going to be tough, but it's a good break, and some of the Central supporters could uh, were probably a bit annoyed about uh, some of those, those uh, decisions by the umpire. However, it's on the scoreboard, so they're going to have to fight. Brown, around the body, very influential, and Hodges just doesn't miss out. Oh, he's given the free kick away this time. Well, call me old-fashioned, but it looks like a square up to me. Probably equals the ledger. <laughs> You're kidding, aren't you, says Scotty? Didn't look too happy, did he? And probably deservedly so. Not a lot in that, by the look of the replay. And your view? Oh, I didn't see a lot in that one. <laughs> I thought you were going to take the soft option, so I didn't see it. <laughs> Softest free kick I've ever seen. <laughs> Say that. <laughs> well. well, It's certainly not soft in there, and you can get a copy of this on video from your AB show. ABC shop simply phoning 343-4601. McGowan looks to break through. Rowan Smith got it in the end. Around the body, they're doing all the attacking. Tough ball to take. Slippery. Proverbial cake of soap. Around the corner, Hodges will oh, be pumped this time. He gets very angry with himself and with the umpires and pretty much everything around him, Scotty, when it doesn't go for him. Makes him a better player, mind you. Ball A's. Brown will finish it off. No problem, David. He's played beautifully. Port Adelaide's best player, I suspect. They get their 12th 
And at the 26 and a half, maybe 27 minute mark with his first goal, they get 12 on the board, 12-3 to 7-8. All right, and uh, just prior to this, it was Timmy Jennifer that did the hard work and he was able to get it forward and other people uh, were able to utilise that uh, courageous work by Timmy Jennifer and it was well finished off. Well, Jennifer's been good, but I reckon Brown, as I said, probably the best player. Brown's been absolutely superb all day. Yeah. A typical Port Adelaide player. A tough little sentiment that gets in there and wins a hard ball. Coming back from a driver, but uh, we're looking forward to a big game from him this week. James Wine with the left foot clearance out of the centre. In the direction of Cotton, it's Saywell with the football. Kicks it further on to a Cotton who had run deeper into the forward line. He's 65 metres out from goal. He's a natural left footer. And it's all congested back there in the full back line of the Port Adelaide team. There's a free kick deemed high. Northeaster recipient. The crowd go berserk. They're not happy at all with that one, but I think it was clearly there. Transfers play to Roger Delaney. Delaney number seven. So much experience has this player. No one guarding the mark. Takes his time. Ambles kicks the ball long to the wing position where Warren Treadray doesn't let him down. He's impressed in a couple of occasions. Flicks the ball into Wilson. Wilson on the left foot. Kicks the ball long in the direction of Burgoyne. He's got elasticity to his body. He's magnificent there, the way he collected that footy. Scott Lee tackled. Oh. Through comes Malakellis. He's got all day. The goals are open. He pot fires it long, and it's successful. It's his second goal, Malakellis, and that is a tremendous goal in the equation of this game. Very, very important goal, that one. Uh, they just keep running hard forward, don't they? Weight of numbers told. Malakellis got it and from 50. It was a superb kick. And Malakellis adds his second one, having got one, the very first goal of the game at the four-minute mark of the first turn. And it was the right option. Not, yeah, not going Malakellis for the pass. Has had a bit of an indifferent season, struggled early, but just starting to get back to that form that saw him uh, runner-up in the McGarry medal last year. His pace is very important to us through the midfield. Parada coming off. Yeah, to be the blood rule, and he's taking his time simply to allow his teammates to regain a bit of composure here as really there's been a, just an onslaught from the Port Adelaide side. Scores were level. At the 16-minute mark, they were. And uh, then they've kicked goals five in a row. The 16, 21, 23, 26 and 28-minute mark. So they've blown the game wide open again. And Central, well, they got back before, but as I said earlier, with heavy legs, and the slippery ball, it's going to be a lot harder this time around. Herrera off, lures back to centre half back. Balkwell comes out to centre half forward, leaving David Flood alone in the, in the goal square. Poole, a definite study of concentration. And he's a dangerous man to put into the ruck, I can tell you that. He's a very good ruckman, and that's it. Well, haven't Port Adelaide burst this open. 31 points to difference. And Peter White, the 1975 McGarry medalist, in a nutshell, you might explain why that happened. Yeah. 31 points they have to make up as Poole knocks the ball down to Geneva, who clears in the direction of Burgoyne. Carter, who's playing up forward today. McGuinness with the handball to Malakellis on to Brown. He's not preferred right foot, and there's the result. Poor kick by Brown and Central District clear through Hicks. Good kick to the centre of the ground. I thought it was good. I thought Balker was in position, but Geneva was equal to the task. Poole flicks it up in the direction of McGuinness, who puts it on to Rowan Smith. He's cool with the footy. Anderson drops the football. Looked like he had a hand problem. Rowan Smith butters up. And he comes from everywhere. Scott Stevens with his body over the football is tackled fiercely by Poole. Northeast flicks it up to Binky, who uses the safety of the boundary line at half back, and they wrestle, let each other know a little bit about it also. But it's 31 points to Port Adelaide in fourth position, playing the league de leaders, Central Districts, at the Elizabeth Oval. 1975, McGarry medalist with us, Peter White. Just a lazy 21 years ago, Pete. Not long ago, is it? No, well, it doesn't seem long to me. <laughs> It doesn't seem long to me. In a flash. Lewis, centre wing. 
So too McGuinness. Very influential for him. Wakeland lost feet. Just can't have a part of the contest there when that happens. Port Adelaide on the march themselves. 31 points is the biggest break of this game. Scott Lee, the heat's on back there in the kitchen. Oh, he's absolutely crunched by Hodges. In fact, it wasn't Lee, it was Abbott. Well, Johnny's pretty tough, though. Gets up and chases it and then kicks it towards the line and it just lobs inside. Well, that was just fantastic to see by Hodges. I was a little critical of him earlier in my mind. Scott Lee dropped back in front of him to take a mark and I thought Hodges could have absolutely pulverise him and basically reminded him never to do that again. And in that instance, he was able to really cannon into Abbott. And that's great physical pressure. Well, Abbott, to his credit, also got up and uh, went on with it. He'll have the ice pack on after the game, though, I'm sure. Far side of the ground. The port structure is okay. The numbers are there. Brown gets it. Still the numbers are there. Pool. Share it. And finally, with a player who looked like Geneva, it's right up towards the full forward line. Gurdum. Borlase. Oh, it's stolen from him by Daniel, who's had his work cut out on the half-back flank. McGowan. Central push it forward. I reckon if they're going to get out of this Central District, they need a couple of goals peak very quickly in the first part of this last term. AFL winners seen Melbourne defeat Fremantle last night by 21 points. The Richmond defeat Geelong by 65 points. And Sydney defeat Hawthorne by 23 points. Also Brisbane, big winners over Fitzroy, 87 point margin. I wonder if Fitzroy just, uh, I wonder what they would have treated that game like with their uh, marriage next year. Here's David Green across the top or kick it. Well, we saw him do this in the last term last week against Norwood where he got them within a point. This time, well, he's got them a little closer. 13-3 to 8-8. Coming off interchange, that's his first goal. That's just the start uh, Central's required for this last quarter. Get on the scoreboard very quickly, and uh, that'll give them something to, uh, to really work, work on. And there's still plenty of time. They're going with uh, what breeze there is. The conditions are... Uh, not bad at this present time, so they've got every opportunity. Well, if they want it, they can certainly muster it. No question of that. Bulk will, will oppose pool. This centre bounce clearance will be crucial. If the Bulldogs can get another quick one, their home crowd will really get behind them. 81 plays 56. Port Adelaide in front. Pool with the tap. Down in the direction. We're emerging with the football is Brown. Puts the ball forward, but Stephen Swart, using his experience, playing in front of Burgoyne. Transfer supply out to Borkwell, but he lets Wakeland run onto the football. Carter in, well, you could say pursuit. A bit kind, perhaps, to Carter. Cotton emerges with the football and puts it through the middle. And that's the one the Bulldogs needed. That's his fourth. He's been tremendous on the half-forward flank. And Port Adelaide, 13 goals, three. Lead Central District, nine goals, eight. Yep, there was run there from Wakeland coming down from the uh, the back line, and they, they just worked at it, kept on persisting, got it forward, and it was a great finish off. I think if you uh, were a coach and you wanted to demonstrate how to play at half forward, that's how you do it. You just read it off hands, snare it with one take, break at the goals, and finish it off. Beautiful. The right hand fist, the ball just went a little inboard. Perfect spot, Jared Cotton. Five minutes gone. Potter. Oh, they're mustering a bit, the uh, doggies. Lee's under some pressure. Cook across the top to Green. They're flat-footed, the Magpies. Dead set flat-footed as Green fires away at the northern end. It bounces through. Whoa! Oh, Peter Green loves it. He's a very excitable character. He's got his second at the five-and-a-half-minute mark. They've got three in a row, the dogs. What a start. Uh, they were able to, even though Port Adelaide got the tap, they were able to hold it in the centre and then move it forward. A lot of the Port Adelaide players were flat-footed. The uh, centrals weren't, and they uh, moved it on in a great kick for goal. Started the quarter 31 points down, and they've now narrowed that to only 13. Three quick goals to the Bulldogs. Poole versus Bokul. Poole again collects his own tap and kicks the ball long in the direction of Carter. Goes over the back to Hodges, who falls to the deck, and they jump on the footy from everywhere. Peter, well, Scott Hodges goes to town on the umpire. They've still got Conway right up the front central. They lose every single time, almost every single time, when Balkwell goes with Paul in the middle. What do you think about putting the height of Conway in there? 
Well, they're obviously, they've waited up. The coach has said, no, we need this goal scoring potential down there. They're prepared to lose uh, the, the centre bounces and work the ball after that. Uh, and we can't knock them really. They've, they've had their moments. Potter from Bulkwell. Away he goes up towards the full forward line. It's smashed forward. Lewis is there. So too is McGowan. He never misses the mark. Oh, really? Round the body it goes. Conway. Can he take the mark? No. Cook was there as well. Just a little bit of spoil on each other. Working it way back is uh, Lewis. Had a couple of options. Stevens now goes blind. Ken Sheldon shakes his head. Blind, but still there a chance. Cotton has five. They're excited, Centrals. Very excited. Why wouldn't you be? Within seven minutes, Cotton's got his fifth, and they've got their fourth goal for the quarter. Again, this is about persistence, isn't it? They're not going to give up. They're just going to keep going. They kept it moving forward, and that Jared Cotton is a very elusive forward, always at the fore of the ball. With five goals from half forward, you've definitely done your job, and I bet Port Power are looking at him very closely. Certainly Alan Stewart sitting with us this afternoon, or just in front of us. He'd be having a close look at Jared, I'm sure. Well, there's no question about that. He's a very talented player. As Poole wins the tap yet again. And I was shaking my head, Stephen, at that handball from Lewis. It went behind Stevens. Didn't give him the advantage. Stephen, Swert it is, who picks the football up and kicks it blindly. And Delaney, sitting back, reads that well. In front of the members, big left foot kick by Delaney. I can't pay that says the umpire, no question. Burgoyne emerges with the football. Into Anderson, who's been quiet since half-time. Kicks the ball long in the direction of Hodges and Malakellis, and Hodges responds with a great mark. Strong, isn't it? Very strong. Yeah, that's, that's, he's a great player, and uh, when the, you really need to take a big mark up forward, uh, he's the man that can do it. And we're looking at that windsock, we nearly tip him to kick this across him more than into the face isn't it just coming across the right shoulder gee it's a crucial goal just to stem the tide four unanswered goals at the bulldog in this last quarter hodges approach it drifts to the left 82 playing 74 i don't think i've heard a cheer as big all day for uh, for anything as when he missed that one another update the Double Blues, well, they won't have won many games over the last seven or eight years by ten goals. If they beat Glenelg, terrific work from the Double Blues. And pretty ordinary stuff from Glenelg. Also North and West at about five to five. Stay with us for that one. The kick out from Central District sees the ball out on the half forward flank for their side, for the Port Adelaide side. But good pressure there. Sousa the throw in, take place. And talking of Port Power, there's Ellen Stewart in the crowd. Just sitting down in front of us, and uh, I wouldn't say that he got it, well, too demonstrable when uh, Central started the march home in this first ten minutes of the last term. But I think he was off his seat anyway. Abbott needed to get it out, needed to get out very quickly. Forward they go. Daniel is on the one side of Herrera, but Herrera decides to go with the leg instead. Inside half forward. North East is there, just works back nice and coolly. I think the Central fans thought there was a free kick there, but it wasn't forthcoming. The Lees, they find the space okay. Anderson is there as well. And little by little, they work it out of that defensive zone. You can really see the Bulldogs, their work rate. You can really see it lifting. They're checking Port Adelaide on every occasion when Port have got the ball. And that's a great mark by Ricky McGowan, backing into the pack. Changes it into the middle of the field where Stevens on his natural left foot kicks the ball long in the direction of Conway, who sets him for great play by Binky. Great courage, tremendous courage as Northeast picks the ball up and further delivers it to Lees. Kicks it wide to the members' grandstand, but it is Central District's defenders that are in front. Carter started well as kick three. But geez, he's been behind on a lot of occasions. And what more could the crowd ask for than a game like this? Everyone's uh, getting becoming very vocal about it. It's a close game. Fantastic footy. Well, it's well expected, I think, a crowd of 7,408 have ventured their way out here. And they're seeing a brilliant game of football. Keep in mind that ball's fairly slippery. And the lads are handling it quite well. McGowan handed back to Wakeland. Sells the puck, works his way around, pops one high, still plays it on, and well done, McGuinness. No advantage there, was there? 
They actually messed around with the ball a bit there. They had the opportunity to move it on. Boundary throw in. Eight points of difference, remember. It's just down into the path of McGuinness. McGowan holds it up, squeezes it out to Gurdon. Needed to provide a bit of protection there to Jared Cotton, but still it goes forward to Balkwell. Right up towards Conway. Dispatches a couple of players. Mead was being very physical and caught one for his efforts. Cook, what's Timmy going to do? Oh, he's finished it off. He's finished it off and there's two points in the ball game. I think he could call that. I think he muffed it up effectively. Well, <laughs> he's looking a bit sheepish about it, isn't he? I'm not sure it's because his nose is very sore or because he did miss on the tape. You watch this. I think he's actually fumbled it as he's running into goal, but he's actually, because his body was in line with the footy, he was able to actually kick it off the ground and dribble through. So it's good play by Tim Cook. Tim Cook has been in uh, exceptional form. Unfortunately, he's dropped away the last couple of weeks. Uh, coming back after a state game, he, uh, his form hasn't been as it was in the, uh, the start of the year. So we're looking for him to, to really pick up. Uh, we took the drive up Main North Road last week and we weren't let down with the quality of the game. Norwood got up by one point. There's just two points in it now. And Port Adelaide, the visitors again have the very small break. 13-4 to 12-8 and nail-biting stuff. Well, the crowd have seen their home crowd have seen five goals slammed on in this last quarter. Five unanswered goals to close the margin from 31 points at the break to now only two points as Borkwell taps the ball forward. But is Delaney. Well, that's a free kick, a deliberate action. And it's gone across the line and Tim Cook's going to get it. From hard on the boundary line. Now, you'd be a brave man to take some money out of the pocket, wouldn't you, and back him from there? Yes, but uh, this, here's one player that's capable of kicking this. Cook. Little Cookie with the nose plastered all over his face. McGowan. Tries to get it back to a pressure zone where they can get a scoring opportunity at it. No whistle. Delaney, hands and knees. Oh, it was stolen. And it was stolen by Stephen Schwert. Too many hands in the pie. Around it goes from uh, Potter. High and long and offline. And it's back into a one-point ball game. What a great game we've got here. All the pressure in the world. All the pressure in the world on everyone out there. Persistence by everyone. And the, the toughest team, the one that persists the most, is going to win this game. David Green's impressed me since coming off interchange. He's been hard, he's been ferocious, which you need in these type of games. Half back, that is for Port Adelaide. Throw in to take place. One point the difference. The league leaders, Central Districts, one point behind, playing fourth place. Port Adelaide on their home deck. We're 20 minutes in to this final quarter. 15, uh, Ken. 15. Yes, you're right. I can't quite read that clock. I've had it's a bit a of trouble with that away. all day. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, top left corner. In fact, it's not even 15 yet. So plenty of time for either side to win this game. What's it going to take, Pete, to win it? Simply. It's just going to take a, a lot of uh, persistence by people, a lot of discipline by players to make sure they man up. And uh, the team that wants to win the most is going to win this game in these conditions. Yes, yeah, sticking to the team rules, getting yourself first opportunity and access at the footy. I'll play on. I thought Wakeland had it. Crowd screaming around us that it was a, a mark. Not paid, goes to ground and we'll have a dead ball. Well, he was certainly sticking to the team rules, Wakeland. He was in front. Perhaps Port Adelaide have a plan with Carter that he runs forward of the play into space because he has been behind on too many occasions for my liking since he kicked a couple of very good goals in the opening quarter. He has three for the game. Carruthers tied up in tight. Well, you'd expect a close game. The bookmakers had it quite right. They started Central at 8 to 10 on and they started Port Adelaide at 9 to 10 on. So they were expecting a tight one, despite it being first versus fourth. I think the fact of the matter is that these two have just produced so many good games over the past three or four years. McGuinness to Hodges. And if there's one man who can win the game, it's this bloke. My word, another great mark. Guy Hodges, uh, we saw him kick from a similar position here not that long ago. So he knows where he has to line up. But a most important goal. One point the difference. Rowan Smith off, Spiro Malakelis on. 
was young Warren Treadray that took that tap. So he's a very accomplished player. Hodges in his approach. Again, the ball drifts to the left. And don't the home crowd just love the result? It actually takes a bit of getting accustomed to it on this ground. I can tell you from experience, it just goes out to two points of difference at the 17-minute mark. The wind comes through that tunnel, and it's hard because you need to take a bit more of the right post than you think. Central will know it. Scott Hodges perhaps not so familiar, and they wouldn't expect him to miss so many as McGowan gets it to half forward. David Green. And this could be crucial. It could be a two-goal turnaround through the inaccuracy of the Port Adelaide team. They've hold, held possession all the way down the ground, Central District. Green kicks the ball long. A. Crummett and Geneva. Tremendous composure to David Brown. Kicks the ball further afield to where Michael Wilson has taken the mark. So Wilson, only 19 years of age, 32 games to his credit, and this will be one of the hardest that he has played. It has had everything in varying conditions. Kicks the ball to centre wing. Through strongly comes Arada and Jennifer equal to the task. McGuinness with the left hand handball, perfect handball. But the numbers. Fantastic. Ball ace. Elusive with the football in the direction of Malak Callis and the tackle again is there from the Bulldogs. That's just a fantastic tackle by Stephen Swirl. It was a fantastic tackle, but the wrong option. Wrong option there. There was a good, good chance for Port to go forward, but uh, the wrong option. Just one too many, wasn't it? Very much a punch and counter punch show here at Elizabeth Oval, round 20 on ABC Sport. 70 games for Tim Cook. Inside half forward. Central have not been in front for the day. They've drawn it level. This might be the opportunity. McGowan, Conway, the run is provided. They shoot away goals and miss. One point the difference. <laughs> They're counting your chicken. A great build up though. They had the players, they had the numbers there. Well, the reaction would seem that it was a goal. <laughs> that one would say no. The second part of the reaction certainly concluded. One point the difference. 19 minutes gone. And it's not being too melodramatic to suggest that both sides, their season hangs on the next few minutes. Up it goes, and Conway has taken the mark. The Port Adelaide heads. You don't see it very often, Peter. They're down. The hands are on hips. They don't look well at the moment. They don't look confident. There are some bad signs out there at the moment for Port Adelaide, and uh, uh, particularly there with leaving the player in front like that. I know uh, the fullback was involved in the play, but straight after that, it's necessary to get out there and get in front. Conway, a goal in the second turn, now a goal in the last. Beautiful kick under extreme pressure. Central for the first time in the day they've waited until the 19 and a half minute mark of the last turn to do it but they've got themselves in front. Six unanswered goals in this last quarter. Amazing. It is amazing. I, I have to say that I didn't think, I'll be honest and wear my heart on my sleeve, I didn't think they could break back. Port looked too good in the third turn. Yeah but we don't know what's taken out of the Port Adelaide side. It's a big ground, uh, wet conditions, heavy conditions, uh, they've done a lot of running. So maybe uh, the legs are taking the toll on the game. Five points of difference. The Bulldogs pull. Strong right hand fist out of the centre. Picked up by Gray. Puts the ball long, but sitting back is Abbott. Sitting in the hole in front of Hodges. If anyone can win the game for Port Adelaide, it's Hodges. And John Abbott is able to do it well by sitting back in the space. Now what choice do you make from here? <laughs> well, a good one in the end, he found a player. Say well. Lobs back on the one, one step. And finds Scotty Stevens. And Stevens has been excellent on his centre wing. Short pass is with Abbott, decides against it and gains another perhaps 20 metres. Spoiled forward, Delaney, a long way from his territory and Potter finds the line. Five points of difference, 88 plays 83. And that's great experience, isn't it, from Connor? They're in front. Uh, they've got the ascendancy. It's a tight game. There's still plenty of time. And Port Adelaide are going to have to pull something out. 
There is plenty of time. You're quite right. The ball goes back towards the boundary line. Just inside. And now over, but not before the umpire's blown his whistle up. Central by five points. It's a tight game. It's a very, very important game. Bolquil around the body. Good. Just made a little path for himself. The clutches of Port Adelaide got hold of him. Ginova couldn't get the kick away. Oh, Potter really wanted to launch into it. He wanted to sink the size 11 into it, but he couldn't because a teammate was there. Now, Port, can they build Borlase? One clean take will be the ticket there. Can't take it in Central. Well, the desperation on show. It wasn't that great desperation. It could have, could have gone forward. Port could have had a big opportunity then. Very important smother for Saywell. And a very important dive by... Stephen Schwert, outstanding on his half-back flank. Across the line it goes. Last week, Norwood and Central. We had very little time on. I wonder what we're going to get this time. Updates at the moment. We got Sturt by 58 points. A great performance there by Sturt against Glenelg. And coming up, North Adelaide are playing West Adelaide in a must-win game for both sides there as well. And that's not talking it up because the final five is on offer for the winner. Round the body, Geneva. Here, they're a chance. Oh, Malakilis left it behind. Just still got the time though, he's put himself under pressure. Abbott arrives late, up it goes to Hodges, oh the heat's on. Who was in the heat on back there? Oh the pressure, was that just, was that... Was that the pressure, just pure pressure that did that or did he think he had it before he had it and was looking to go away and have a shot for goal? I think he'd uh, started those little legs pumping before he had it in his arms. Four points in it, 23 and a bit minutes gone. Oh, I've seen some great games over the last few weeks. Great games of South Australian National Football League. Wonderful stuff. Wakeland kicks wide and very intelligently to the far side, just trying to find some uh, some width. Daniel shows a bit of poise in the dying stages. Northeast bashes it towards the line. And Cotton, that man on screen with five goals, could be the difference at the end of the day. Port Adelaide don't really want this ball uh, out of bounds, just going purely defensive. They're behind. They have to do the hard work. They have to work it up, run it up, and give them a chance to score a goal. Here's Geneva. Timmy said during the week that uh, if he didn't get picked in the power squad, he'd be inclined to give it away. That'd be a great shame. Here he is, diminutive, courageous, well-celebrated little skipper. He's under the gun now, though. That he's been very courageous today and an inspiration for his side. From the ground goes Brown. Opportunities running out. Wakeland. And back there with a magnificent torpedo punt. If it goes out of bounds, it'll be just the ticket for them. Stays in though. Wilson drags it back towards the line. Plays right in the central hands. Great pressure from Central. They ran all that way down there, ran at the player, and have kept the ball down in their attacking zone. Boundary throw in. McGuinness. Chances are running out. The time is running out. Stevens across the top. Potter. They start to build again. He tries to get the leg straight on line. He does it finally, sitting and working back. Is Carter. Oh, I wonder if he got a touch on it. I think he did. And if he did not, then Porter in diabolical trouble. They are. Central fans stand as one. And I think the players at the 25 and a bit minute mark think they've got it with a 10 point break. Yeah, just listen to the supporters. Great effort there, great tackle. The persistence of the Central players, getting the skills together with handball, kicking long. And really, this was a big miss by Stephen Carter getting back there. And a great goal, probably the match winning goal this time of the game. Craig Potter is a uh, no holds barred. Uh tough running player. Now, he's been uh, a fantastic person in the football club and he's just a fantastic player and you know, we, we're just excited every time he takes the field for us. Well, the challenge is with Port Adelaide. They're inside half forward. They must score. They simply must score. McGuinness, free kick. It's going Port Adelaide's way though. That's the important thing for the Maggies. Ginova knows that time is of the essence. Plays it on. It's going to suit Central though. McGowan stood his ground and did it very, very well. I don't know that he had a lot of choice, did he, at this stage of the game? My oh, word, he is under the hammer, but that's uh, the courage he has. It's evoking some emotions at the moment. 
Oh, out on the full. I must admit I don't like that law. If it doesn't carry 10 metres and it can't be a mark, then I don't see why it should be out of bounds. But anyway, it's play on. Could be a critical one yet. Right up towards the front end, Treadray took the leap at it. Central, composed. They keep it calm. They keep the head down and cook around the body. Looks for Abbott, doesn't find him. Benke's there with Brown, they look tired. All players look tired, and why wouldn't they be? It has been a sensational push and shove game from the outset. Fantastic game with all the pressure, all the players giving 100%, diving on the ball, holding it in there, trying to run with numbers. Uh, it's not over, but uh, Port Adelaide got a big task. So well. Lays just a hand on Anderson, but the defence is holding up very well back there for the Bulldogs. Wakeland, Lee, Schwert, McGowan's dropped back. Herrera, they've got plenty of experience. They've had to use every last bit of it in this last turn. Now Wakeland heads to the boundary line, thinks that that's the best option. Lee's a big shove out, free kick. I think Brian's resigned it. I think he's conceded it. Lewis, an up and under sort of a kick, and they're just playing the boundary line, the percentages at the moment, Central. If they find it, they'll be very happy, and Daniel just walks it over. Ten points of difference. 94 plays 84. Central a 14-10. Port Adelaide a 13-6. And Central have kicked six unanswered goals in the last term, as most un-Port Adelaide liked when they looked in command at three-quarter time. Central now with another chance. Here's Cotton. He's got the pace on North East, but North East has put the big frame in the way and played it very well. Plays it on to Benke. Whistle goes for a mark. Great smother. Great smother. They've pumped up the doggies. That's the sort of play that's uh, really allowed them to drag themselves to the front. They haven't given up. They've kept on going. Great smother. For a little fella who uh, has had his face involved in a couple of nasty incidents, he's a very brave boy to put it across the top of that smother, Tim Cook. Can't be a lot of time left. Coming up to 29 minutes. Six goals only in the term. Not a lot of uh, bounce downs or ball ups. So the trigger finger on the timekeeper must be getting very itchy. Across the boundary line on the full. Well, that'll make it hard. There's a real uh, um, expectation from the central supporters now. The big smiles on the faces and they appreciate all the effort that's been put in by their side today. The timekeeper might have had a seizure himself. McGowan got it from Bulkwell, fires away at the northern end. All sorts of pressure being put on North East because Cotton has been a very damaging player. And we have a jump ball down there. Here's the central's bench from left to right. Wine, Lee and Flood. And you'd have to remark that if you can have that sort of experience on the bench late in the game, then you've served pretty well. Laid down. And Central happy now just to close it down each and every time. Stevie Wright just getting himself organised for presentations back at the club. There's the siren. A very unlikely win, I'd have to say, if you joined us at three-quarter time. It was 31 points of difference. And a very gallant and self-believing Bulldogs have got up by 10 points, 14-10 to 13-6.